Hey, folks, we're here with some exciting news. We just heard this morning that there is a new Nova in the sky. And that's exciting because you may know that the word Nova means new. Uh, what it means is that a star has popped into view where no star was seen before. Uh, this one is in the direction to the southern constellation Centaurus. Uh, and it's exciting. Boom, a new star. Uh, not really a new star. We'll tell you about that in a sec. Uh, and before we go on, our thanks to Ernesto Guido, Marco Rochero, uh, and Luca Izzo for this animated image showing the actual new Nova. So this Nova uh, is just on the edge of visibility to the eye alone. And it's at southerly latitudes, so people at about 25 degrees north or further south can see this nova. Uh, observers reported the discovery to the American Association of Variable Star Observers, or AAVSO, late yesterday. The current name for this object is, get ready, PNV J1437217584740 <laughs> And hopefully they'll change that soon. Uh, the NOVA has been reported at, as shining at about magnitude 6, so it should be visible with binoculars and possibly to the eye, to those who have excellent vision under a dark sky. John Setch in Grafton, New South Wales, Australia, has been credited with the discovery. And the suspected NOVA, uh, as you can see from this slide, lies at right ascension, 14 hours, 37 minutes, 21.77 seconds, and declination minus 58 degrees, 47 minutes, 40 seconds. So those are like map coordinates. That's how astronomers find things in the night sky, is they give them those coordinates, and then they know where to aim their telescopes. So we have those coordinates in our article about this object at earthsky.org. And it's not in there yet, but as soon as I finish here, we will add a link to that article in this post's description. Woo, okay. So just know that those coordinates place it near the very famous star Alpha Centauri, which is our closest neighbor uh, among the stars at 4.3 light years away. And I think I have a map of that. Yes, oops, nope, that's the wrong one. Nope, I don't have it. Sorry, you guys. That's yesterday's chart. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we've got one in the article as well. So uh, the Nova is not physically related to the nearest star, Alpha Centauri. It's simply in the same direction on the sky's dome. And the actual distance to the Nova is still unknown. But early spectroscopy that's the practice of splitting things into its rainbow colors, uh, that someone has done that, and that adds to the excitement. A low-resolution optical spectrum obtained by Rob Kaufman in Victoria, Australia, shows strong hydrogen emissions, and that is a classic sig signature of a classical nova caused by a thermonuclear explosion on the surface of a white dwarf star in a binary system. So the NOVA is very new information and uh, images and additional information are still somewhat limited, but if it holds its brightness, uh, it could be visible to keen-eyed observers at southerly latitudes tonight. So sky watchers should look towards Centaurus and keep checking the latest reports from the AAVSO, that's the American Association for Variable Star Observers, for the latest updates. And now, let me bring in my friend, Marcy Curran. Hi, Marcy. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, Mar 
Marcy is our voice of the night sky here on YouTube. And she has some cool sky watching stuff that we in the Northern Hemisphere can see. Marcy, what have you got? Oops, Great. hang well, on. There, we've got the moon near Mars in the evening sky, both tomorrow night, which would be Wednesday night and Thursday night. And you're gonna have to look for this roughly about 40 minutes after sunset because Mars and the moon are gonna be pretty low, but it's, I think having the moon there is gonna help you find Mars because Mars is, is starting to fade away. It'll kind of disappear out of our evening sky next month. So definitely take a, take a peek the next couple of nights and see if you can use the moon to, to help you find Mars. It'll be a steady red light. Yes, and Mars is in that part of its orbit uh, with respect to Earth. So we went between Mars and the sun in, must have been like January or something of this year, right? Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was January. January. Yeah. And so, you know, we're going around the sun in the third orbit and Mars is going around the sun in the fourth orbit. And we went between Mars and the sun uh, in January. And then, you know, Earth moves faster than Mars in orbit and our orbit is smaller. So we're gaining, 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 getting ahead, farther ahead, farther ahead. But there's always this long period just after that happens where Mars just hangs in the evening sky for many months. And that's the phase that it's in right now. But it will, you know, it hangs there for quite a while. So it's it's behind us in orbit. And we're kind of looking behind us to see it just hanging there, fading, kind of fading away because we're we're out racing it in orbit. It, so it it's, has been fading and getting a little harder to spot and because it's lower and you're competing with twilight, but it's still there. I can usually find it in monoculars. Yeah. And it's, uh, this is, this is a tough time of year to see things. We were talking about that yesterday when Bob King was here. Uh, it's a tough time of year to see objects low in the West after sunset because the ecliptic or the path that the planets take across the sky is makes that narrow angle with the horizon, as you can see in this, this image. Right. But you, we've got more, right? Marcy, you've got one more thing. And yes. that is this beautiful planet. Tell us about this. Yes, uh, this is, of course, the planet Neptune. And uh, today we are actually um, flying between it and the sun. So we are calling Neptune is at opposition today. It's shining at around 7.8 magnitude, which means you need at least good binoculars or a small telescope to see it. But uh, it's kind of easy to find right now because it, it will be in the same field of view as Saturn. It's um, this month ranging about two degrees from Saturn all the time. And that's uh, basically the width of four full moons side by side. So it'll show up in the same field of view in binoculars. And also it's gonna be visible all night. And it's roughly, it takes the light from Neptune right now about four hours to reach us and that's kind of interesting to think about that it's so far away that it takes light four hours to reach us and also if you have a, a medium-sized telescope even you can actually see its brightest moon Triton and that's always kind of fun to see one of the moons of one of our distant planets so we've right. got that and, going tonight too and we wanted to show this image because um so what time is this? This must be the morning sky. This uh, is morning. Yes. And so Venus is in the east and Jupiter is kind of high in the east. And then Uranus, Neptune, Saturn. So Marcy and I have been marveling all year at the words planet parades. <laughs> and this chart is an example of, of what many are in 2025 calling a planet parade. And, uh, but you know, one thing to know is that the planets are always in a parade. They always make this kind of line across the sky. Sometimes the parades are better than others because they involve bright planets, but Uranus and Neptune here are not super visible to the eye. They're, or Neptune's not visible to the eye at all. And Uranus is 
only visible under the very best of conditions. If you're standing there holding a chart, you know, and looking to see which of those faint objects is Uranus. Right. So, yeah. But they are but, there if you know where to find them and have the optical aids to help. <laughs> that's right. Okay, Marcy, thank you so much. Uh, so thank, thank you to everyone for joining today. So this is just right hot off the press. We just wanted to give you a, a heads up on the Nova. And uh, we will, I'm sure, be finding out more about it. And we will be back when we have more. Thank you for joining us. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>